And now let's, um, let's find out about our last two laureates. I've got a tiger by the tail that's plain to see. Oh, it looks like I got a tiger by the tail. Hi, I'm Maria, and I'm in fifth grade at Lone Tree Elementary School. And I'm Taylor, a senior at Legacy High School. Hey, Maria, who's your friend? Well, I heard that animal print accessories are high in demand right now. JA volunteers teach students like me about trends in supply and demand. Our next laureate could teach me a thing or two about filling demand and that space in my dorm room next year at college. He runs one of the pri largest privately owned businesses in the state and wrote the book on how to thrive, even in tough economic times. Let's watch this short video about an American tiger, Jake Jabs. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. Hi, I'm Jake Jabs. There will only be one Jake Jabs. He's just really a maverick in the industry. Is my mic on? <laughs> Through his folksy television commercials with exotic furry friends, Jake Jabs has put himself and his business into the living rooms of just about every home in the region, growing American Furniture Warehouse into one of the largest furniture businesses in the entire country. One of nine children, Jacob Jabs grew up in rural Montana. He went to Montana State University and received a degree in vocational agriculture in 1952. He worked his way through college playing music. My brother and I had a band and I ended up teaching guitar in a music store in, in Bozeman. I also took ROTC, the Korean War was on, got a commission in the Air Force. So I won the Air Force as a second lieutenant. After serving, Jake returned to Montana and bought a half interest in a music store in Bozeman. I finally uh, decided that there wasn't a lot of opportunities in music and started selling furniture. In 1974, Denver was hit with a recession and Jake saw yet another opportunity. So I bought the old American Furniture Company. I bought their assets. Uh, it was on their books for a million and a half dollars and I paid them 80,000 cash. Jake renamed the business American Furniture Warehouse. Jake has uh, built quite an empire. This is a dynasty. It's, it's an incredible operation one that both manufacturers and retailers from all over the world would come to visit and, and shop and see. You try to do it right the first time. If you do it right the first time, then people recommend you. This philosophy, <laughs> paired with an undeniably unique advertising strategy, made American Furniture Warehouse the talk of the town and turned Jake into a local celebrity. Everybody knows Jake, it's Jake or John Elway. Um, are the two most famous people in Colorado. So it's become a, a symbol with us. I don't own the animals. You don't want to own them. <laughs> with the enormous success of the business, Jake is able to help hundreds of charities. And like everything else Jake does, he goes big. There is no one I know that gives back more than Jake Jabs. We went to the Easter Seals camp. We come through the door of Jake's place and the whole room is packed um, with kids and the campers and, and they're chanting, Jake, Jake, Jake. Usually what happens is kids are dancing and singing on the stage with him by the time he's done. And then he's done things like make newspaper space available. When he does his ad, he might tag it with, this is Easter Seals week, please come in and purchase furniture, and he gives us a percentage of the sales. You know, we had all the fires up in Boulder. He made sure he went out of the way to help the community, help those people. Jake has also been incredibly generous to his alma mater, Montana State University, which established the Jake Jab Center for Entrepreneurship. Very recently, Jake gave the college a record-breaking $25 million, which will be used to build a new business school. So I'm trying to help them uh, get that entrepreneurship spirit going. What he means to the state of Colorado is tremendous income to the state because if there was no American Furniture Warehouse, there would not be another company like American Furniture Warehouse here makes me proud to be known as the best furniture store in Colorado. You know, a metaphor of Jake when we were out playing golf once and he hit his drive out of bounds. He hit it way out, out, out on the beach and there was a cliff and he made sure he went down. He made sure he got his golf ball, but when he came up, he had a whole handful of golf balls. So <laughs> that's Jake Jabs. There'll never be another Jake Jabs. So having him in your life is, uh, pretty magical. Please help me welcome to the stage, Jake Jabs. Two. I've got a tiger by the tail that's 
to say There won't be much when you get through with me I'm losing weight and turning mighty pale Looks like I got a tiger by the tail Where's my guitar? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's, uh, I didn't realize this was this big a deal. It's very nice to be here. Great group, wow. Uh, I'm from a Lodge Grass, Montana, small town in Montana. Uh, how small is it? I was born November 23rd and I won the first baby of the year contest. <laughs> We had, we, had, we had a sign on the edge of town that had slow down, resume speed, both on the same sign. <laughs> I went back from my class reunion last summer. I was the only one there. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who sent me the invitation. <laughs> we were, we were uh, uh, both my parents uh, came from uh, uh, the old countries, we say. Uh, my dad was born and raised in Poland. My mother was born in Russia. Uh, we're a family of nine kids, and we grew up very poor. As you know, immigrants come over with a shirt on their back, so we grew up with a very poor family in Lodgegrass, Montana. Uh, but the thing that my parents taught us is this land of opportunity. They, they actually both escaped the commun communism. Uh, my dad actually fought in the uh, Russian army at the time that Lenin and the communists took over Russia, and he was an eyewitness to what happened. Uh, when the communists took over, and what happened, nobody would work, and he says up to 30 million people starved to death, and he was an eyewitness to that. And uh, I'm a little bit like Pete Cord. In fact, I got asked tonight a couple of times, roaming around, talk a little bit about politics, but I think our new economic uh, un unfair uh, or trying to equal the uh, uh, income of people just doesn't work just doesn't work. Uh, and I think I'm the living proof of that because, uh, uh, you know, my parents came over with, with basic and nothing and I made a successful furniture store. On my mother's side of the family, she was born in Russia and all of her family actually starved to death under Stalin. So uh, it's just proof that the free enterprise system is really, it's the only system that really works. Uh, and my parents taught us the love of America, uh, uh, it's a land of opportunity. Uh, you can go out and make something fun. You can, you can actually keep, keep what you earn. Not bad, you know. Under the communist system, you couldn't do that. Uh, so uh, it's been a nice journey from Lodgegrass, Montana to American Furniture Warehouse. Uh, we actually did well during this last recession. Believe it or not, we made money all the time during the last recession. I get asked all the time about IKEA. Not to worry, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we can kick IKEA's butt, you know. <laughs> it's not rocket science, you know. It's just it's you're doing a better job and selling a product at a better price. So, but it's nice to have competition. The competition makes you a better operator. It makes you buy better. It makes you work harder. And competition is good. And uh, so we have no problem with competition. Uh, I want to thank uh, particularly my families here tonight. Uh, I want to thank you for putting up with me with the long hours that you have. You know, in business, you work long hours. I still work, I don't know, how many hours am I working? 60 hours, 70 hours? I don't know. I don't, I don't count my hours, but uh, I enjoy what I'm doing, and I think as long as you what you're do enjoy what you're doing, you should just keep on working. So that's what I intend to do. Uh, I particularly want to thank my employees. I wouldn't be here if it wouldn't be for you guys. So let's give them a nice hand. Thank you. Thank you. Good employees is what, what make a business. So anyway, thank you guys very much for, for uh, making this uh, what it is. And I want to thank the uh, Denver Chamber and the Junior Achievement for inviting. We're, we're having a Junior Achievement uh, uh, building built inside of our Thornton Warehouse where we're going to have all the kids come and, and see it. So we invite you to come and see that. So anyway, it's very humble for me to be here. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.